Uh, we're laughing because we're old friends. Well, I'm old. He's not. He's Gordon McGinnis, and he's president, New Jersey Policy Perspective. Good to see you, my friend. Nice to see you, Steve. Now, you're a former state senator. You formerly headed up public broadcasting in the state of New Jersey, and you've done a whole bunch of other things. Now, why, when you're at the top of your game, are you deciding to step down from this role? Well, the world has changed, number one. So I like to deal with the people, not just at the top, who are making the decisions in Jersey, but the people who work for them. And I've found that the uh, people who work with me have very good relations with the staff, the senior staffs in the uh, legislature and in the executive branch. That's important for the work that we do. Describe a New Jersey policy perspective. What is and why does it matter as we put up the website, Gordon? Okay, well, it matters because this is a, uh, if you will, a think and do tank. Uh, it's, yeah, we're, we put out reports. Not just think. So not just think. We put out reports. They're footnoted. They have graphics. But we're there to try and influence what happens in New Jersey, particularly when it comes to policymaking. And we have a point of view that we take every time, which is to, to, to take a progressive point of view, to say New Jersey has got problems. Here's the problem. It needs to answer those problems, and here's what it will take. Frequently, it involves something that most political figures do not want to hear about. For example? Well, New Jersey is now at the bottom of the list of states in terms of its credit rating. It's at the bottom of the list in terms of its capacity to deal with investment in its assets. I mean, we've got a great place among the 50 states. Location is one of them. But if we do not maintain the opportunities for affordable higher education, if we can't put New Jersey Transit back to work on a regular schedule, if we cannot invest in those things which make us a particularly strong state and attract people who are well-educated, who want to get good jobs, who need to get access to New York and Philadelphia, our future is grim. And that's where we are right now. But, Gordon, no one's going to disagree with the conceptual aspects of what you just said. By the way, we're speaking with Gordon McInnes, president, New Jersey Policy Perspective, former state senator in the state of New Jersey. By the way, go way, way back in our day, you know, this organization. We did a documentary on how legislation and how the legislature should work. We did it with uh, Senator Gordon McInnes and Rich Bagger, who served in the assembly as well. And right. it's one of my favorite things we've ever done because it <laughs> showed how it really should be done by people who may disagree on policy but are not disagreeable with each other. That being said... A lot of what you talk about talks about taxes, tax fairness. There are some who believe that New Jersey is not a state that you can afford to live in anymore. We're losing a lot of residents with dollars to Florida, where there is no income tax, to Pennsylvania, where the income tax, I think, is 3%. Right. Ours is 9-ish, if you will. And to New York and other places. You say what to those who say Gordon McInnes and some of his friends want to raise New Jersey state <laughs> income tax to do a lot of the things you just said? Long-winded question, but I know you have the answer. Well, first of all, we have a high tax rate compared to most states. You mentioned New York. That's the second state for when people leave New Jersey. That's where they go. And they largely go to New York City, where the taxes are much higher than they are in why? New Jersey. Why are they higher? No, why do we lose them? We lose them because New York City has benefits that we can't match in terms of uh, everything. Being that New people... York City. Yeah, being yeah. New York City. So what we have are the assets that draw people who want to be in the center of uh, business and finance and everything else. And they want to live here. And the cost of that is, think about it, we've got 9 million pe people living in the seventh smallest state in the union. We have the highest uh, number of residents per square mile of any state, and whoever's in second isn't even close. And there's a reason for that. And location, access to New York, access to Philadelphia, access to the Northeast, that's all a part of it. We need Senator, excuse me, excuse me, Gordon, yeah. still Senator McGinnis, you still have advocated that we should raise taxes on millionaires. And the negotiation that took place between Governor Murphy and some in the legislature, right. particularly Senate President Sweeney, was that they wouldn't raise taxes on right. millionaires. They would raise it on those who weren't $5 million right. or more. You don't like that. You think it should have been on millionaires. Yes. What about if we lost those folks? We don't. All right? We do. Yes. Everybody has a story. Yes. About somebody, Anecdotally. But statistically. Statistically, the number of people who earn at least a million dollars a year and pay taxes on those earnings, 
That number has been rising steadily since the Great Depression, the Great Recession. Right, so, of 2008-9. Right. So, in fact, people are still here, even though taxes on their million dollar plus are higher than they would be if they were in Iowa or in Wyoming. Why tempt fate by raising it? Because the record is that if we, if we do not, we don't have the revenues that we need to invest in the assets that make New Jersey an enviable place. We need that be. revenue. We need the revenue. Do you think that the middle, okay, policy perspective, your organization came out with this, it was a good one. Uh, who pays analysis released the Institute of Taxation and Economic Policy. Uh, you found that families with annual incomes of $40,000 to $80,000 pay way more than their fair share of taxes. Right. Talk about it. Okay. So here's what we have. You, when you take all the taxes in place, property taxes, right. or the property taxes that renters have to pay. By now, this way, is after a $10,000 cap with the federal government the, on state and local taxes, right, but go ahead. Right. They ha we have a sales tax. When you take those taxes, property and sales tax, those right. affect people in the middle a lot more than they affect people at the That's top. That's right, because they pay the same amount. They pay the same amount on whatever they're buying, and they're not buying Aston Martins or Lamborghinis. They're buying coats. They're buying, right. yeah. and they're, they're, they're coats, are they, are they included or not? No. I got that wrong, I'm sorry. That's all right, no, no sales tax on clothing. But in fact, things that they need every day, they buy, and there's six- Refrigerator? Point. Refrigerator, they pay, they pay a tax. And so someone who's making a million dollars, someone who's making $45,000 are paying the same thing. Exactly not right. Not fair? And they, well, their, their refrigerator may be more modest if they're making forty-five thousand dollars a year. But conceptually, not fair. Not fair. Not fair. And so we need to catch up, and we need to make this a place where people who are in the middle, and who are struggling because mm. this is a high-cost place. There is no place else where the property taxes are higher. There's no. There are very few places where the cost of of a residence is higher. Mm. So. All of that is necessary if you're raising a family, but we give you this benefit. If you're raising a family in New Jersey, you're going to the public schools, schools. public schools that are second best in the nation. Only Massachusetts kids do better on the national test than New Jersey kids. And that's a great yeah. magnet. It's a good for deal. People. Before I let you out of here, uh, by the way, it shows how much I know that I thought clothing was sales tax. Yeah, well, now, leave it alone, all right? Edit that out. <laughs> Before I let you go, you've always been someone as I said, we did that documentary on you and Rich Bagger, civil, respectful, regardless of how people disagree on issues. The tone and tenor of political discourse in our nation, 30 seconds or less. Oh my God. We've never seen anything like it. And we've never seen anything like it because we have a president who behaves in a way that no previous president has behaved. And they, that person has set in motion all sorts of things that do great damage particularly to places like New Jersey, but to the entire nation. Gordon McGinnis, who was a former senator, but uh, after a few years is leaving as president, New Jersey policy perspective, he continues to make his mark in this state. And I want to thank you for your service. Thank you, Gordon. Thank you, Steve. All the best. Pleasure to be here. This is State of Affairs. I'm Steve Adubato. Let's continue the conversation on Twitter, at Steve Adubato. And I promise uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Agnes Varis NJTV studio at 2 Gateway. Funding has been provided by New Jersey Sharing Network, Delta Dental of New Jersey, Seton Hall University, the Northward Center, NJM Insurance Group the New Jersey Education Association, and by New Jersey Resources.